Okay, welcome to lecture 3.1. We're going to talk about vectors. Uh, primarily, I'm going to go over how you can uh, use vectors when you have multiple reference frames that are oriented uh, in different ways, and then you have points that are located in those different reference frames. I have the um, course notes, uh, online notes up here, um, and I have a chapter on vectors. So in the prior knowledge survey that you all filled out, you told me that you know very well what a vector is, dot products, cross products, and the various properties. So I'm not going to spend any time in the video going through those parts, but if you need a refresher, all of that is available in the online notes. I am, though, going to start with uh, this section vectors expressed in multiple reference frames so that we can um, learn some of the new things and uh, spend time on that and then I will go through uh, one simple example and then a, uh, a slightly harder example uh, here to give you an idea of how to set these uh, vectors up. So the first example that I want to um, go over is just a simple pendulum. We uh, in dynamics often like to use uh, the pendulum so I'm going to have a pendulum hanging from a ceiling that I'm drawing here, and we'll call that uh, ceiling the in frame. So we'll have a reference frame associated with the ceiling, and then I will um, attach some pin joint here, and then we'll have a, uh, a pendulum. Just a simple uh, bar hanging from that, and then I'll have another simple bar uh, as a second pendulum. So we have a double pendulum in this case. And then um, I'm going to establish some reference frames that are attached to, uh, we've already done the ceiling, but one also for each of the two pendulum bars. So if I call this first one, in, I'm going to have a uh, in X and an in Z there for this 2D planar setup. And then I'm going to introduce another reference frame that um, would be associated if I'm observing the system while affixed to this first bar, which we will call A. So we have A, and I will call this vector that I've drawn um, little a x, right? and then that would mean that our, uh, oops, not x, Z. And then that would mean that we would have a an AX that looks like so. Right. And then I'll call the um, bottom one B. Of a reference frame B to observe if we were to stand or uh, uh, have our eye affixed to that bottom bar. And then this will also have some associated mutually perpendicular unit vectors. I'll call this one B, Z, and VX. Okay. The last piece of information that may be useful is um, having some dimensions um, or some variables here that locate uh, the angular orientation or orient the uh, reference frames relative to each other. So I'll say that this angle is theta and this angle beta. Right. 
So with that, we've now established um, these reference frames, and you've already learned how to create the uh, direction cosine matrices that would relate uh, in A and B, so we won't go over that. But um, I'm going to introduce then the idea, well, maybe we're interested in writing uh, vectors um, between different uh, sets of pairs of points. So I'm going to add um, some points to this. We'll have a, a point at the tip of the bottom pendulum, a point at the joint, and then a, a point here on the uh, pin joint that attaches to the ceiling. And then I'll label those points. I'll call it P1, P2, and P3. All right, so I have the information here now on my um, diagram of this double planar double pendulum system. And we're going to talk about position vectors first. So if I want to write position vectors, um, from P1 to P2, P2 to P3, or P1 to P3, or P3 to P1, P3 to P2, anything that I want, I can pick any pair of those points and try to write uh, a vector that connects them, right? So let me get a new color that will stand out. Maybe I'll just do this green. If I want a, a vector, here that goes from P1 to P3, that vector would look like that. And if theta and beta change, then that vector is going to change in its orientation um, and, its, uh, and its magnitude, right? So we're going to get changes in this vector. And I'm going to call this vector, and we're going to use a notation um, like so. I'm going to use little r for position vectors like we have. And then um, I'm going to use the notation that I'm, this vector is from tail to tip P3 with respect to P1. So this is my position vector notation to, to locate two um, things. And that position vector right, both um, is a function of the two scalar variables theta and beta. So, Right. And those uh, variables theta and beta show up in the um, orientation and the direction cosine matrices relating these. Uh, and, they, and I can somehow write um, uh, this position vector here. So you probably can um, do this already. You could write out uh, in the n frame, in the n um, x and n z directions, what that would be. Work out some trig trigonometry. And, um, and figure that out, right? But what we're going to do is take advantage of the fact that we've introduced these new sets of unit vectors associated with the A and the B reference frames, and we're going to use those to write a vector that's a composite of uh, unit vectors from each of the reference frames, right? So to do so, um, I first want to uh, write then these intermediate vectors from P1 to P2 and P2 to P3, and the sum of those two would give us our P1 to P3. And the reason I do that is I can write those vectors in a very simple way. And I forgot to give one more piece of information. Let's um, introduce the length of the two arms. So I'll call um, the length of the bottom one L2 and the length of the top one L1. Right, so we need that last bit of information. So to go from P1 to P2, we need to see that it's along the AZ direction, and that the length of that arm is L1. So I can easily write that the R vector from P1 to P2 equals L1, a scalar, times the AZ unit vector. Right. And then I can similarly write that the vector from P2 to P3 equals the L2 distance along the 
B Z unit vector. Okay. So that's pretty simple. I don't have to think about the direction cosine matrix. I didn't have to do any trigonometry. Um, and I can just express these two vectors in terms of the most convenient reference frame uh, unit vectors that I can. And then I can sum these to get the vector from P1 to P3. So that's just the first one plus the second one. P3 with respect to P2 plus R P2 with respect to P1. And that's simply L1 KZ plus L2 BC. Right? So I've made a, a position vector um, that I was after there and uh, can write it in a pretty simple form. Okay. So we do know um, some information that we can write um, AZ and BZ in terms of um, uh, reference uh, frames other than themselves. Okay. So for example, let me move down a bit to give me some space. Right. AZ, if I want to express it in the in frame, I know that I have um, a uh, positive um, sine component in the NX right, plus, and that's a uh, sine of theta. Plus a cosine of theta component in the enzyme. That's also positive. Right. So that's nice. I can also do this for BZ, but I'm going to express that into um, AZ. And because I the way I've drawn this, it's going to be uh, the same situation. I'll have a sine beta in the AZ x plus a cosine beta in the a z right so using these i can then rewrite the vector r um, in the in frame for example so with respect to those in vectors so then if i uh, say that uh, and i forgot my notation up here P3 with respect to P1. So I've got this uh, AZ vector. I'll say that L1 times um, sine theta in the NX plus uh, L1 times cosine theta in the NX, in the NZ. All right, so I've expressed that first component um, here as the same as this. Right. And then I can do the next component. Now this one's in BZ, so I have to write it in AZ, and then also back into um, NZ. So L2, um, sine beta ax plus l2 cosine beta az so this component is there and then one more step and we could get the entire vector here expressed in the uh, in unit vectors And I'm going to need the AZ component and the AX component. Let me just add that here. All right, AX um, 
is I've got a negative z component. So it's negative sine theta in z and a cos theta in x. I believe that's right. All right, we're getting close. Um, L2 sine beta and then AX. I've got a cosine theta in X um, and then a L2 sine beta. Uh, that's going to be a minus L2 sine beta times the sine theta and the in z, right? And then the last term, I'd have a plus L2 cosine beta uh, times the az term, sine theta in x plus L2 cosine beta uh, cosine theta in c. Okay, so now I've written that vector, um, which becomes much more complicated in the in reference frame there by re-expressing those terms. You could group things up and simplify a bit um, for the in x in z terms, and uh, and this would look simpler. But that's the basic idea. So this I've expressed. R P3 P1 in the in reference frame. So you could do all your work in a single reference frame, but you're going to have to deal with all of the nastiness that comes along with the direction cosine matrices. Um, whereas this is very simple to write, right? Much more, much more friend, more friendly. We can um, actually do some pencil and paper notation, and uh, using the uh, unit vectors from different reference frames is going to enable that. So the notation here um, let absolves you from having to think about the um, orientations and the direction cosine matrices. Yeah. So that's the basic idea of writing a position vector. Um, from different points using um, the um, different unit vectors for these different oriented reference frames. Okay, so that's a simple 2D uh, situation there, and we've uh, shown how you can express them in um, a combination of reference frames, like so, or uh, back into a single reference frame. And we could also express the same vector in A or B. You just have to uh, do the right replacements there uh, to manage that. Okay, so that's um, the basic idea of creating these vectors and um, I have this example in the notes too um, that is this desk lamp, right? Find my mouse, there we go. So um, you may have a desk lamp like this on your desk, but um, these are pretty cool. They're these articulated uh, lamps that uh, self-balance. So wherever you move the head, um, the springs and the uh, forces that they generate will ensure that you have a nice balanced lamp. And it was, uh, um, I live in Rotterdam, so uh, you may have seen these if you've come uh, over here. These are sort of a large, fun example of those. But I made a sketch here of uh, a 3D system that uh, has uh, for a desk lamp like this and this desk lamp can rotate and um, change its angle of its first arm relative to the base. It has a single pin joint here um, at the first knuckle and then um, it has a sort of a joint uh, here that it rotates the head about so you can angle and point the light in a different direction. So I want to, let's just look at that one. And then we'll do this one also in SimPy um, to show you how that works. So where's my lamp? Here's my lamp. Okay. 
So here we have n, a, b, and c. Those are three, I'm mean, sorry, four primary reference frames. And I've sketched out the, um, hopefully enough information for each of the orientations. So we start with this in frame that's attached to the base of the ramp. And it rotates first about the z-axis, the shared uh, z-axis through a Q1. And then a second rotation, Q2 here. And I, I wrote a negative here because if it was a positive rotation about this AX, my lamp would be leaning in the other direction. Okay, so um, I, I indicated that negative so you're aware that this is um, um, making a, if, if a Q2 is zero, the thing is positive. Q2 is positive, it would lean this way for a positive rotation around the X. And then this is uh, at least displayed in the figure as a negative rotation. Okay, so just that's just worth noting. And then we follow up the first arm at a length of L1. And, um, and there's a pin joint that rotates about the X axis here. Okay, so we've got a positive Q3 rotation about the positive BX, and that's the same as the BY. Um, sorry, the BX is the same as the AX. Right? So we have a shared axis there. Travel up the length L2, and then I have uh, uh, BX. Okay, shown, but this rotation line, this is actually two rotations that we're going to have. The first is that we tip this down, also about BX, through a positive Q4 to get this axis, and then we rotate Q5 around this new C, Z axis okay and so the rotation of the the lamp actually is about this dotted line um, and then this Q4 can uh, sort of pitch the lamp head up and down too if you adjust that then we've got these points P1 at the base P2 P3 and then P4 I put at the lamp head and we've given these L3 and L4 that locate them all right so this is enough information to try to establish these um, unit vectors and um, we've already learned about the orientations like I've said so if you can set up the orientations properly for all of these reference frames then we don't have to think about the direction cosine matrices when setting up these vectors right? so I'm going to start with the vector just like we did before, R from P1 to P2. And it's simply L1 times AZ, right? Because we've got the AZ aligned with that arm. And then we can take the position vector from P2 to P3. And that's L2. It's along the BZ direction. Simple enough. And then um, I wrote, uh, writing these wrong, this is P1 and this is P2. And then we have uh, P3 to P4. And this one is a little more complicated but not too bad. We uh, move in the positive Z direction, an L3 distance, and a negative CY in the uh, L4 distance to get us to that point. So I'm gonna write the uh, uh, L3 in the positive CZ. will take me from here to here. And then I go negative, right? It's in the negative CY direction. L4. And I have my three composite vectors there um, that I just write in the most convenient reference frame and unit vector set as I can. And if I sum those up, I could get the vector from P1 to P4.
right? So that seems straightforward enough since all this is drawn out, but let's um, move over to SymPy and see what that looks like when we want to create these the SymPy. And the nice thing about SymPy is that it will let us not have to think too much about the uh, direction cosine matrices, right? So let's do our standard imports. Import SymPy as SM. Import SymPy dot physics dot mechanics as me, and then I'll uh, do um, SM dot init printing to give us on the math this plays nicely um, we're going to need some symbols right we had these uh, q1 through q4 and l1 through l4 right so q1 q2 q3 q4 and i think you can this is a shortcut to get those l1 L2, L3, and L4. I think that's correct. And those are the constants. So we get those. Let's create the four reference frames. And I'll show you, um, you can sort of do the same thing there too. So if I do in a comma b comma c, you can actually use symbols and um, in a b c. But if I say I want the class to be a reference frame, um, you can actually you can create those in one shot too. Okay, so now we have the reference frames and the symbols we need. First step is let's establish the uh, orientations of those. Okay, so A is oriented um, by two angles with respect to N. So I'm going to use body fix. Body fix is three, but we can just set one equal to zero. So I'll do A with respect to N. And then um, the first angle is Q1, and the second one is Q2. So Q1, Q2, and then 0 for the third angle, because we're only going to do uh, two of those. And we have a rotation. The first rotation is about the Z axis, and the second rotation is about the X axis. And then I'm just going to put an arbitrary Z, because I have to put something else uh, for the third, but we'll have it set to 0. Um, so that's the first uh, rotation and uh, we can see what that direction cosine matrix will then look like. Yeah. All right, B orient axis, uh, B relative to A is just a simple rotation through Q3 and it's about the shared BX AX. So we'll do AX here. And then we have um, the next rotation to get us to, to C from B, there's two angles too. So we're going to once again use a orient body fixed relative to B. We'll use two angles, Q3, Q4, and then zero once again. And this rotation is first an X rotation and then a Z rotation. So we'll do X, Z, and then I'll just put an X as a dummy there and we should have established properly our orientations and notice for q3 or q2 i pointed out that i drew it in the figure negative but that doesn't mean that i am establishing that orientation i'm always only showing you that um, i happen to draw it tipped in a negative direction instead of the positive so i do have a positive here for that orientation definition and it's worth thinking about those things too because you you can set up your figures 
in your in your orientations uh, in a simple way to minimize how many different sign changes that you have to worry about and, and whether or not you have to worry about including a pi or a pi at pi over half uh, uh, um, in these angles so setting up your drawing nicely at first will uh, save you some time on the orientation setup um, but it'll take some experience to probably know uh, beforehand the best ways to draw those figures. All right, we have our orientations, and now we can create these position vectors, which um, should be pretty straightforward. So we're going to say R, and I'll use um, from P1 to P2 equals L1 times uh, A dot Z. Which was our first one. Right. Then I'll say R from P2 to P3. Uh, and that one was L2 times B dot Z. Right. And then R P3 to P4 is the one that's a little more complex. L3 times C dot Z minus L4 times c dot y. And I typed something wrong, lowercase p. Yep. So there we are. Um, I have these three pieces of the uh, unit vectors. If I sum them together, then I can get p1 to p4. Or p1 to p2. R P two to P three and R P three to P four. So there we are. We have the nice uh, simple notation for this unit vector. I'm sorry, not unit vector, for this position vector that takes us from P one to P four. And uh, I've got it basically in the most simple form that I can. Once you have that vector, you can use the dot express method to express it in any reference frame you want. So, for example, if I want it back in this uh, in frame, the base, I can do so. And I get quite a complex expression. Um, depending on how long these are, you can. Uh, do a dot simplify to see if uh, this will try some trigonometry simplification. So dot simplify is just going to do trig simp on the measure numbers of that vector. And this will probably give us a little bit of a better version. But still, it's, it's quite nasty. And um, you know it takes a little thinking to do that simplify. So um, we can also look at, well, what is this vector? look like in any reference frame. So maybe I want to check it out. Well, if I'm standing on B, how does this reference frame look? And um, there we go. So that's not too bad. It gives a, uh, an okay form if we stand in one of the intermediate ones. But you can create vectors like this um, in 3D. And as long as you have set up your orientations properly, SimPy is going to do the nasty application of the direction cosine matrices to let you express these vectors in any reference frames that you want. Okay, um, a couple other things uh, that might be useful. So vectors uh, have a lot of properties. If I hit tab after that period, I can sort of see some of them. You'll learn about the cross and the dot product. Um, this free symbols one is sort of nice. So this doesn't take any arguments, but it tells me if I have a vector and I express it in B, which symbols in the measure numbers does this depend on? Oh, I forgot. I do need to. I, I don't need to express it in B, but I can provide B to here. It says, "Tell me what symbols are in the measure numbers of the vector when it's expressed in B." And then, it, and then it tells me. And if I inspect this uh, above, I should just see only Q3, Q4, and all of the L's. It does not depend on what um, Q1 and Q2 are. 
when we are looking at uh, V. And if you think about that, right, I'm standing on this arm, the B portion, and it doesn't matter which way the lamp is swiveled or tipped, the distance between P1 and P4, it stays the same. That vector looks the same for me in, in reference frame B. But if I ask for that in reference frame N, it's going to then be dependent on all the Q's there and all the L's. So this is some of the little questions that are in the assignment that you want to think about. Um, which scalar variables are the function, are the uh, is the vector a function of when viewed from a specific reference frame? And this is going to matter uh, a lot when we start to take derivatives in the next lesson. All right. But that's the basics of vectors. Um, if you get your orientations right, it's quite easy to write the vectors. Right, you get to write them in the most convenient reference frame that you want, and then you can express them in any other reference frame to get the more complex uh, view if that's necessary. All right. Well, that's all I've got to say about vectors. Check out the homework and um, and the online notes and see where you can get. All right. Stop recording.